Hi, this is Mark Berkler. And in this podcast, I want to ask, answer the question, why does repeating a healing prayer release more of God's healing power? Because it sure appears to me that it does. After I had heart surgery, <clears throat> I prayed numerous times for the healing of my heart. And the prayer approach that I used was kind of a new one the Lord had given to me. Uh, we've written it up uh, on our website called Inner Healing for an Organ. And I had done inner healing for scenes where people like take people back to traumatic scenes in their life and, and let Jesus walk into that scene and minister healing, just speak and show things. And, and so I understood that inner healing. Rita Bennett taught that many, many years ago, and I've taught it for years. But I'd never applied it to inner healing for an organ and said, God, would you come and heal the organ of my heart that went through trauma? as my chest was cut open and heart was manhandled. And that was a traumatic experience for that organ. So inviting Jesus to come in and minister grace to that organ was, was something new. So that is a blog that you can go to. It's in our podcast notes in the bottom, Inner Healing for an Organ. And uh, so as I was praying Inner Healing for an Organ, uh, every morning for like a week, I prayed the same prayer over and over. I could feel the power of the Holy Spirit just descending upon me, and my whole being was shaking, which, as my being shakes, I, I, un, I understand that to be the power of the Holy Spirit moving upon me. And so I thought, huh, well, that, that happened like six days in a row here now. And I thought, hmm, what's that all about? I mean, like when it happened the first time, didn't didn't wasn't that a healing? And if that was a healing, then what's all the rest of this stuff that, that's going on here? And so I called Kurt Green, a friend of mine, prophetic naturopath, and, and I said, do you understand what's going on here? And he said, yeah. And uh, he took me to a verse, which I want to share, just share with you right now. It's um, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds and casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So when I think of a stronghold, I think of a military place, you know, which is all built up with a barricade around it, and it's hard to get into. And so the Bible says we have strongholds in our mind, and a lot of our spiritual warfare is, is taking those strongholds and dismantling them, and so as I pray a prayer over and over, God is in the process of dismantling a stronghold and replacing it um, with healing. And um, so what in the world makes up a stronghold? What, what is it composed of? I know in the natural, you can have bricks there, you can have concrete there, you can have wood structures there, or you can have iron, I mean, whatever. So what would be the pieces to a stronghold in my mind that I would need to remove perhaps one after the other in consecutive prayers that would dismantle this in, entire thing. So I'm just going to introduce you to eight possible structures that make up this stronghold in our mind. Uh, and this is going to be a very brief introduction if you want more extensive research and information on any of these eight uh, prayer approaches. Uh, we have blogs that cover all of them. So. The first thing I'm going to ask is uh, lies, Lord, because uh, uh, a lie is a, is a, a stronghold, part of a, a piece of a stronghold. Lord, what have I accepted as a truth which is contrary to what you have stated in the Bible is true? If I believe that you're not here, if I believe that you're against me, if I believe there's never enough, if I believe that you're not guiding my steps, those are all lies which need to be repented of and replaced with truth which we do that through journaling, letting God speak to us. And the second part of a stronghold could be, Lord, what are the wounds in my body or my soul or my spirit that I've inflicted upon myself or other people have inflicted upon me? And that often can come as a word curse. Somebody speaks something negative, like you're a jerk, you know, or uh, I spoke a word curse, I'm, I'm a B-level student, spoke it over myself for a long time till the Lord said, stop, that's not that's not true. You have the mind of Christ. So, so again, we're gonna pray and say, Lord, um, 
what are the word curses that I or others have spoken over me that need to be repented of, removed and replaced with your divine truth? Third part of a, a structure, a stronghold, is Lord, where is there brokenness in my heart, soul, or spirit? A, a broken part within me, I um, mean, the Bible talks about Jesus healing the brokenhearted. So a broken part within me, <clears throat> could be when I encountered a trauma in my life. And rather than coming to Jesus and saying, Jesus, how do you handle this? I didn't bring Jesus into the scene. I just said, I'm gonna deal with this myself and I'm gonna build a barricade and I'm gonna fight this off. And, and I went to self-effort and I went to personal struggle. So now I've broken off a part of myself, which is no longer drawing upon Jesus. It's drawing upon self-strength to resolve it. And so that's that's a broken heart that needs to be repented of and, and, and let God heal the heart and, and come back and say, Lord, I, I want to invite you into that scene where that trauma happened and see what you were doing. So rather than me defending myself and building a wall and a barricade, like I, I said, I've got alligator hide on, you know, and after I've been hurt by people numerous times, I just put on alligator hide. Well, that's a brokenness within me. And the Lord said, take it off. <laughs> Become vulnerable, stay open, all right, to people. And yeah, you'll be hurt, but guess what? I'm going to be standing right next to you, and if you'll turn to me, I'll heal the hurt on the spot. So uh, then the next thing would be captive spirits. I mean, Jesus cast demons out of a lot of people, and so a demon can attach itself to any one of these things that we have just talked about. He can attach himself to, to lies, to wounds in my heart, to brokenheartedness, uh, so all of those are legal roots for a demon to come and say, hey, I can help you develop that. And, and then they're going to compound the problem. So now we're going to need deliverance in addition to rebuke the demon, command it to go away once we've removed the legal right for it to be there. Another element to a stronghold is, Lord, where is there shock and trauma in my cells that need to be released? Because all of our cells contain memory. Uh, good memories and bad, and uh, our, our cells will store that memory and to remember it, and uh, it's pretty fascinating. This one lady who received, a girl who received a heart transplant, uh, because the girl that she got it from had been murdered by, uh, violently murdered by a guy, and uh, once the girl re re received the heart transplant, she began to have dreams that night of this violent murder and who perpetrated it and she was able to describe the event in enough detail to the police department they were able to go find who killed the previous girl and arrest them and convict them so that's the amount of memory that is stored in our cells so i asked jesus would you please come in and would you sweep out the stored memory of trauma within my cells and free me from that stored trauma and replace it with gentleness and peace and comfort, all right? The next would be um, hurtful events. When uh, I walk through a scene, I experience a scene and something terrible happens and, and, I, and uh, that's the time when I'm gonna need inner healing. I mentioned inner healing for an organ, well, it's gonna be inner healing for an event. Lord, uh, this horrible thing happened. I know you were there in the scene. So in my morning devotions, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look and say, Jesus, where were you in that scene when that happened? He's gonna show me where he was. He's gonna show me what he's doing. And I'm gonna say, whoa, wow, that's great. You know, and I'm gonna forgive the person who perpetrated that, forgive the event if I need to. This uh, John Arnott tells a story of a lady whose hip problem wouldn't go away. And, and he, he, it happened when a horse fell upon her, fell on her, her, her horse fell on her. And uh, John said, well, did you, have you forgiven the horse? Well, that's the event. And she forgave the horse there and was instantly healed of the hip injury that she'd struggled with for years. So another element to this stronghold in my mind <clears throat> is, Lord, are there opened doors or portals or gates that are allowing negative energy to flow into me? Psalm 24, seven uh, talks about that, uh, you know, open, open doors and open gates, all right? Uh, you can read that if you want to. A, a portal is a, is, a, is a gate or a doorway that allows something to come through. And we wanna be open to the Lord. So 
we open ourselves to the Lord and we open our portal by gratefulness, thankfulness, forgiveness, love, mercy, gentleness. That opens us up to the Holy Spirit. We become a portal through which he the heaven flows and touches people around us. Um, but maybe we have been filled with anger or resentment or bitterness and we become an open portal and a doorway for demonic negativity to invade our beings. So those need to be closed and then open the doors to, to the heaven, true heavens. And then the final one that we're going to mention here, the eighth, uh, to remove a stronghold. So the eighth component part here could be, Lord, what are some of the generational sins and curses that have been passed down through the family line? I can see it, my ancestors, all right? Uh, and you say things get passed to the third and fourth generation and even further, you know, what are these energies, these demonic sin energies that have been flowing into my DNA from, from when I was in my mother's womb. And he tells me in my morning devotional time, I place the cross of Christ in my prayer time. I fit to the cross of Jesus between me and the previous generations. Those curses that are coming as a stream of energy hit the cross, fall to the ground. And I speak that. I command to hit the cross, fall to the ground. And I release that baby in the womb, which is me. And I pray the blessings of Calvary cascade down over that baby. And I bless you with life. I bless you with life. I bless you with life. Come alive. Come alive. So that's uh, breaking off generational sins and curses. So a stronghold can have any number of these eight parts. It can have all eight. It can have a few of the eight, whatever. So in my prayer time over several days, I can be asking these different eight questions, asking what the Lord shows, just dealing with layer after layer after layer. And there might be more than one traumatic event, you know, to heal. And there might be more than one generational sin and curse to heal. There might be more than one lie to heal. I mean, I could conceivably spend a month working through these prayers um, over and over, asking God for more insight, to getting more insight, healing layer after layer. And, and so maybe that's why my body would shake day after day as I would pray for healing of my heart and feel the power of the Spirit move across it. So I guess what I want to say is... Pray and keep on praying. Um, don't just pray once for something to happen. If it doesn't fully get resolved and you're not fully free, then pray again, pray again, pray again, and, and let the Spirit come again and again, soaking you in His healing presence and applying these seven prayers uh, as necessary to bring complete rest, restoration. So in the podcast notes in the bottom, I will give you some links uh, that can help take you to some of the different prayers that we have mentioned here. All right, this is Mark Berkler signing off.